This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to the AWS training program. Today's topic is Athena and Redshift. <clears throat> so we are entering into the uh, the phase of AWS where we will talk about the different type of relational database and other type of serverless databases from AWS, which will help us to analyze, to process our data. So today's class is about two uh, different tools. One is Athena and another one is Redshift. What Athena is all about, what Redshift is all about, what's the difference, how to set up, set up them and how to execute the queries, all these things we'll be talking in today's class. So let's start the class with the agenda. The agenda is overview of crawlers, overview of glue data catalog, overview of Athena, set up Athena, execute SQL queries in Athena, overview of Redshift, create Redshift cluster, and execute SQL queries in uh, that should be Redshift. That's a typo. So let's <clears throat> start with overview of uh, Athena. So it is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data directly in Amazon S3. Usually, if I compare with the, the traditional databases, right? First of all, you have to think about some table structure. What should be the table structure? What should be the column names, their data type? you will be loading the data into the tables and then only you can think about querying your data right but in aws it's not always mandatory to create a table and load the data if you have some structured data stored in s3 suppose you have a csv file comma separated values or tsv tab separated values if you have such formatted data available in s3 you can directly query over there and that's where Athena comes into the picture. It is serverless. Serverless means you don't need to launch any server for it. You remember we launched EC2 instance because that's a server. On top of that, you can execute anything. But if you remember about Lambda, Lambda is also serverless. That means you concentrate on writing your code, writing your logic, Python code, Node.js, Java, Scala, whatsoever. And where exactly that code will run aws will take care aws will launch some server temporarily on the on the go it will execute your code and then it will terminate the instance this is known as serverless same thing is here for athena you don't need to launch any ec2 instance or any other type of compute server that's not required zero infrastructure and zero administration that means infrastructure part you don't have to worry even the administration part like you have to upgrade the server, you have to downgrade the server, what should be the memory, what should be the, uh, you can say, hard disk size and all that stuff. That's not your concern. Easy to query, just use standard SQL. That means you don't have to learn any new query syntax. If you are aware about the basic SQL syntax, select star from table, where close, order by, group by, joining, left outer join, right outer join, if you know all these basic SQL syntax, you can play with Athena. You can execute your queries. Pay only for the queries you run because your data is already stored in S3. And if you are running some query, only that would be chargeable. That means if you are running a heavy query or if you are doing multiple joins, if you are executing the same query multiple times a day, Accordingly, you will be charged. Otherwise, there is no upfront cost. There is no Athena server which keeps on running entire day 24 by 7. That will not charge you anything. Scales automatically, just like Lambda. Because when it's serverless, when the infra part is not your concern, that simply means AWS will uh, take care of everything. Whether it's a high availability or it's a scalability, in case you trigger five queries together and those are very complex queries behind the scene athena will automatically scale itself so that it can fulfill that requirement so that it can handle that load and the use case is you can use athena to process logs suppose you are getting some logs from server and you want to analyze that 
maybe in the logs there is a log printed like server crashed unexpectedly or server is fa facing memory crunch or something like that right but you want to analyze your server logs from last six months last two years to find out how many times how frequent my server is getting crashed because that will help you to take a decision on your server maybe if it's crashing more frequently you may have to think about upgrading your server changing your server something like that right so you can process logs you can do some data analytics or you can even run interactive queries you have some data and you quickly want to do something you want to do group by order by joining this one that one you want to do something on on the live right quickly interactive queries you can even do that so this is just an overview of athena now what are the other aspects of athena what are the other components in athena how to install it how, i mean how to set up it and how to use it all these things we'll talk about in upcoming slides so before we move ahead any doubt on this slide okay let's move <clears throat> the next is add a crawler what is what is a crawler and how it's related to athena <clears throat> crawler is as the name indicates it crawls so you specify some directory in s3 and it will crawl through that directory structure it will go quickly through your subfolders through your files and it will find out that okay these many folders are there these many files are there and these files has some structured data with some uh, header that header can be used to create the table right so as i told you like we won't be creating the table manually but ultimately behind the scene your athena should know like which file you are pointing so it will look like a table from the front end you will think it's a table but ultimately it is nothing but pointing to one s3 file but yes metadata is required at least should we should know that this file is ultimately representing some data suppose sales data and this has 10 columns and these are the column names because while querying you will specify something right you will specify select count star from this table where region is equal to us something like that right so crawler is capable of crawling through some s3 folder and quickly create some metadata for you so you will go to aws just search for a uh, crawler and you will find the option here this will come under aws glue now what glue is because now there are multiple terms right we talked about athena now talking about crawler and glue is also there we'll talk about glue as well so glue is a data catalog that means glue is a uh, i would say it contains the metadata of your tables it will tell okay these are the 10 tables and behind those 10 tables these are the s3 location and this is the schema and all that stuff crawler will help you to create the metadata for glue and once the metadata and the table structure is in place athena will help us to execute the queries so let's go one by one let's talk about crawler first so you will click on crawler you will find an option like create a crawler so click on that and there are many sections you can see now but these are very simple first of all just provide a crawler name i have given my first crawler it's okay click on next then it will ask you do you want to create a new data store or existing catalog tables there is no existing tables as of now because we are doing it first time so go ahead with the first option data stores and then repeat crawler crawls of s3 data stores crawl all folders whatever path you will provide inside that whatever folders are there it will crawl through all or crawl new folders only suppose today you have four folders and your crawler has uh, gone through those four folders and accordingly it has created four tables for you tomorrow you are adding three more folders so you want to run the crawler again so that it can check the new folders and it can create the new tables right so what behavior you want you want crawl new folders only or next time you want to crawl through all the folders existing as well as new so it is fine you can go with crawl all folders because even going through the existing one will not make any issue it's okay so you can click on next 
choose a data store whatever crawling we will do the store is right now we are doing s3 but there are many more options available but usually the most common uses of crawler and 